Okay, good evening everyone. Uh, welcome to today's webinar, Manage Knee Pain with Ayurveda. Thank you for being uh, for taking time to be with us, uh, with us today. I'm Gaddafi from Nafil Academy. So we at Nafil Academy deliver high quality continuing professional education courses and content for dental surgeons and dental support staff. Today, we are partnering with Nafil Wellness to bring you this webinar. So before we begin our webinar, there are a few points that I would like to share. Um, this webinar will be recorded. So if you'd like to share this recording with your family and friends, please visit the um, Nafil Academy or the Nafil Wellness uh, channels on YouTube. And uh, please feel free to post any questions uh, at any time in the Q&A uh, options in the below section of your screens. Uh, our speaker will do her best to answer all your questions at the end of the webinar. Uh, so today's webinar, Management of Knee Pain with Ayurvedic Insights. So as you're aware, any pain is an unwelcome guest. But pain in the knee is something that which uh, gets most attention because it blocks a person's freedom to move about. Knee pain can be due to several reasons and not always a solution uh, has to terminate in surgery. So um, join our uh, guest speaker, Dr. Vasha, to hear what pleasant solutions Ayurveda has to offer in this unpleasant situation. So a little bit uh, background on Dr. Vasha, uh, our guest speaker. She is a qualified Ayurvedic physician from India's Pune University and has practiced in Singapore for eight years. She strives to be uh, to bring authentic classical Ayurveda to the masses, friendly and empathetic. She has worked with many patients to relieve and treat ailments holistically. Uh, without further ado, Dr. Uh, Dr. Veda. Uh, sorry. Thank you, God. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Before we begin this session, uh, let's invoke Lord Dhanvantari's grace, the Lord of uh, Ayurveda. Om Shri Dhanvantari Namaha. May the words that flow out of this mouth be in accordance with Shastra and science. Welcome, everyone. We have uh, this uh, session for going on for half an hour, and then we'll take question and answers in last 15 minutes. So without wasting the time, let me begin my presentation. Before we understand how to manage the knee pain, we definitely need to know what constitutes a knee. Any place where we can bend uh, a part of the body, it's only because it's a joint where two or many bones can come meet together. They form a joint which makes us animal, whether it's a finger, whether it's a hand, it's a wrist, it's a neck except of course for the skull bones or the last sacral bones. So it gives us, the joint gives us mobility to move and there are certain components in the joint. Um, let's have the anatomy first seen so that you know what actually is in the uh, knee. Let's have the anatomy. So the knee is formed by majorly three bones are there. The one that constitutes the thigh bone is uh, called the femur. The lower where we call the shin, that is the tibia. And there is a one delicate bone also along with tibia. Uh, it's called uh, the uh, fibula, but that's not a part of um, the knee joint, though there are two bones in our lower leg. And there's a covering over uh, these two bones. Uh, where the tibia and the femur, where the thigh bone and the shin bone would be, there's a small cap, we call it as the patella. So each of these uh, two big bones, the long bones, the tibia and the femur, they are massively covered with so many layers. Um, there are some cartilages, there are some muscles that it's only to protect this joint. And when we say muscles, uh, we all know the front portion of the thigh, the quads, the back portion, the hands. We know all that. But what I have to bring a highlight over here is these muscles are joined. We can see on the next slide uh, how the muscles, they join to form a 
uh, a very tough cord that is called as a tendon and um, between the bone so the muscle is linked to the bone uh, with the tendon and between the bone there are different cartilages which in the next slide we'll be able to see properly uh, what uh, these bones are can we have the next slide okay so this is just giving us the front view we can see like uh, the bone the femur has that little uh, different color see that's that cartilage that's at the end so it's heavily loaded over there it's only to prevent the friction so that we can move uh, freely not have pain and um, to ward off any degeneration so good cartilage good fluid over there ensures that the joint is still young and ready to move but it's not so easy there are uh, the joint is little complex there are several ligaments that hold these three bones together which we call it as knee joint so uh, depending upon from what portion they are seen if it is coming from the front portion so we all know it by the name uh, acl we call it right so it comes from the front one come from the back side there is something coming from the medial side that is from the inside and there is something from the lateral side we'll see the side view which is in the next slide where uh, we see the entire this picture like how these um, bones are connected to each other which facilitates the way uh, we are moving whether uh, we are sitting cross leg we are sitting on a chair whether we are climbing uh, the stairs getting down the stairs uh, whatever movements we have to do um, the sports people who have the uh, reflexes like if you see when our the soccer is going on the amount the way um, the knee the whole leg is used the fast reflexes let's say a, a badminton or a tennis so we we see how um, fast we have to move so all this depends upon how young the joint is that means how the cartilages are good it's a, a, able to absorb all the friction um, to move it very smoothly to not have pain so all this the structure if we come to know that what are the components in that it's easier for us to identify uh, if the problem comes what would have gone wrong where so the problem is going to come only in these components there is nothing else out over there and then again there are some special um, which we'll see in another slide uh, how there is uh, some component called as meniscus over there which is like a very nice uh, cushion sitting between the bones so it's like lord's engineering Uh, i always appreciate that that this complex machine called man god has made with such brilliant intelligence like every part is taken care of so that the movements that it, it just gives us variety of movements which probably we don't realize until we are not able to do that movement we just take things for granted uh, we'll go for the next slide so now what could be the cause immediately we should be able to identify when we know what goes in a knee joint we should be able to just visualize what all can go wrong there can be let's say external injury uh, that would be a fall or whatever the movement or the body positioning was not correct some mechanical problem would come um, that means in that structure there should be some problem there could be different types of inflammation of that joint which we call it as arthritis or there could be some other problems let's say patella is having a problem or it could be a referred pain also sometimes like the hip is having a problem or the ankle is having a problem but to adjust that pain you hold your body in a particular awkward way and you walk which causes some awkward pain on the knee so there could be other problems related which would be causing a knee pain so basically only these four things are there so if we see these four things like what could be a uh, in injury yeah like now let's say some reflexes while playing a sport was so bad the knee has twisted badly Uh, any of the ligament can snap off or mm, fallen very badly the bone can crack off there can be a fracture or there can be the cushion 
which is there that can create a problem the meniscus can tear or there's so much inflammation that the fluid accumulates in the knee hmm? or there could be some problem with the kneecap so this is all related with the, the injury part mechanically what can happen maybe some part had broken somewhere and that is like floating like a loose body over there hmm? there is something uh, a tension between the shin bone and the connecting to the femur the particularly um, a ligament or a tendon can create a problem or the kneecap has just dislocated from that place and that's creating a problem or some referred pain can happen and then we saw arthritis could be a reason let's have that slide as well please so Uh, the bone inflammation can come to uh, due to various reasons the uh, it can happen due to some natural degeneration uh, where the cartilage is degenerating we call such kind of a problem as a osteoarthritis or it could be sometimes the body's own immune system is creating a problem uh, we call it as rheumatoid arthritis there could be some uh, uric acid problem so the crystals the uric crystals can go and deposit Uh, on um, the joint which can cause a gout or a pseudo gout like a symptom can come septic arthritis can come um, arthritis due to other diseases skin diseases like psoriasis and all also can create some problem like psoriatic arthritis so there could be various reasons uh, more than 100 actually i've just listed the common as to major it's only osteo rheumatoid that you see but there are so many reasons why a uh, joint could get inflamed hmm, by our own reason or by some external causes or what our lifestyles that we are going to live that we'll see in the ayurvedic perspective let's go for the next slide so yeah the problems like the patella also can have a problem hmm? so we'll go for the uh, next one well, what would be the risk factors who would be having a joint issue so the predominant aspect is uh, people who are overweight so the knee is the weight bearing joint and it would crush and it would cause a easy wear and tear and it could create a problem where um, the cartilage uh, can get worn out easily so we have to just see that um, this can be prevented by having uh, our weight in check so we need not go into a, a suffering some things we can prevent beforehand uh, sometimes there's a lack of that muscle flexibility or the strength is poor and then you do uh, humongous task or it could be something like uh, uh, very ambitiously you've joined for as a new year resolution uh, to some gymnasium and uh, probably don't have that flexibility but you are overdoing certain things and then a particular muscle ligament tendon can snap off certain occupations where you need to stand throughout or carry some weight and you know construction workers uh, certain sports so there are so many uh, risk factors that means they are uh, people involved into these causes could be a reason why there would be a knee pain okay let's see the next one in this slide uh, there's a beautiful slide where <clears throat> we see the meniscus that is in the blue color so it's like you know it just fits like a half c shape between the uh, joint and it acts like that cushion and sometimes um, there is a forceful movement where the knee could rotate there's some this trauma that can cause this tear <clears throat> excuse me which is not uh, initially predicted uh, and it comes as a part of a reflex you might think that you need to do or you can do and then you get up in an awkward position um, you carry a weight in awkward position um, you kick or you play in a certain position you will not know when because it's a <clears throat> excuse me it's a reflex action so this is one part where uh we can see um, how a mechanical problem can come <coughs> excuse me excuse me
I'll just zoom in this. We see over here, like how a healthy joint would be. And some conditions where how the cartilage can wear out. Um, the strength of the bone can produce. It might not have the required density. That can create a problem. The bone can get eroded. So, sorry. These are just few aspects where we are just trying to highlight how a, a problem in a gross level can happen. We'll go for the next slide. Over here also we can see like how the erosion of the cartilage is happening. And it's like a beginning to, you know, a cause of friction. We'll go for the next slide. In this particular, see one side we are seeing the healthy part. The other side, look at the amount of how the bone has eroded the contents of the joint, how the inflammatory cells are occupying the place. So these changes in the joint, is one of the things that uh, rheumatoid arthritis, is the, uh, we'll see the symptoms in the next slide. Back. There is not just the pain, there is a swelling. You can see the healthy side of the joint and you can see the other side where how the swelling is due to the inflammation. We'll go for the next one. So let's see what we see in her rheumatoid arthritis. It's not just the pain aspect, but the knee gets uh, very badly swollen. Um, there can be temperature, local temperature, and even you can have like a fever also. So the person feels extremely weak and unable to use the joint. There's a lot of instability. There's a lot of noise that comes along with it. Go for the next one. And the other condition like somewhere there is like a, a locking kind of a pain that would happen in the knee joint huh? or inability to uh, bend it or inability to extend the knee joint can also happen. We'll go for the next. How, what, how we would uh, identify whether it's a meniscal tear, whether it's a ligament tear. So there are different ways now the modern science has advanced to where we can have a lot of ways to scan from x-ray to different uh, ways we can see uh, the health of the joint we can assess. Let's go ahead. Now here comes the highlight and the point of tonight. What does Ayurveda has to offer us in this aspect? So Ayurveda will always believe in preventing. So we know um, the, uh, why the knee pain can come, identifying its different components. So each component will have a certain role to play. And then the resultant is what we see is only as a pain. But whether the bone has a problem or whether the ligament has a problem, whether the meniscus has a problem, um, there could be each component having different kinds of issues. But in Ayurveda, the perspective is now going to change. How can we uh, how can we prevent these injuries? How can we prevent for not getting the knee pain? We have seen the gross aspect. Injury we cannot prevent. Degeneration, yes, we can prevent. Not having um, uh, good health, uh, good immunity, can we prevent? Yes, we can prevent that. So for all this, we need Ayurveda. So where the scope of modern science uh, <laughs> finishes, there the Ayurveda begins, I always say. The component of Vata is not going to be seen under all those methods of scanning that they say. Okay, X-ray will not show Vata, CT scan will not show, MRI will not show Vata, nobody will say. And Ayurveda is that is a major component. 
Capitalist Nazi. Capitalist Nazi. Why am I throwing these words? Because these are un, <laughs> unseen uh, aspects in the body. If they are in the balance, the health is maintained. If there is imbalance in that, then there are different reasons why a person can fall sick. In today's scope of this uh, uh, talk, we are seeing the knee pain aspect. What, <clears throat> how do these vata, pitta, kapha exist in the body? They exist from the basic five elements. All the things in this universe are nothing but in the gross five element form, the basic element, very element uh, state. And these combine, these five elements combine inside of the body as vata, pitta, kapha. Outside, we all know the basic five elements. We see the space, we see the air, we see the fire, water, earth. We see so many different aspects. And these aspects only our sense organs can absorb. Um, they go outside in the world and we gather the information, how the world is. From the eyes, eyes is a seat of fire. From the ear, the sound, sound is a seat of space. Um, the akashavai, hmm? the feeling that touch, hot and cold, yeah, it's a vayu space. The taste, hmm? it's the water space. And the smell, it is the for prithi, the earth. So each of these are five sense organs. They are representing what is there out in the world. Apart from our five sense organs, we don't have anything else that we can go and grasp in the uh, world. So with these five senses, what we can grasp, those are the basic elements. And these combine in various permutations and combinations. Like the space and the vayu will permute and, and form a vay, vata dosha in the body. The fire and the water, that would combine to form pitta in the body. And the water and the earth will combine to form kapha in the body. Are these names important? No, they are not at all important. Do you have to know about it to understand? No, you don't have to know. You can just feel it. You can, you know, what your sense organs bring to you and you can just feel that. So it is only a heightened awareness. We can judge where we are standing. Um, for example, if you are having cold, you don't go and eat some more watermelon or cucumber or cold water or any cold drink, you'll say, okay, give me some warm to have. So you don't need a rocket science. Your body tells you do it, but you just don't know that you're, you are using an Ayurveda aspect for it. That's all it is. So I'm just giving a term and terminology, but that knowledge is not necessary to know your body symptom. Let's go to the next slide. I'm throwing some more names over here. Like I threw some names in modern, okay, you know, there could be osteoarthritis, this is this, this is this, this is this. Ayurveda has also described so many things, very beautifully poetic, rich Sanskrit, and it keeps on singing the whole medical science in a poetic manner. So all things are there in the shloka form. Language is different than Surafing English with the Sanskrit. So Ayurveda has thrown some oh, names for the pain in the knee. Uh, it can be called as Sandhigata Vata. That means the Vayu has gone into the joint. Vata Rakta. That means there is an issue not only with the Vayu, but it's also the issue with the blood, then the Pitta component. Then there is something very funny. Uh, it's called as Kroshruka Shirsha. Kroshruka is a face of a jackal. And how the jackal face is like that, the knee shape bit. That means it's like a, it's only pertained with the knee joint. And Ayurveda has got this specific role of this um, a crosh to Kashirsha, their description, like a jackal face. Then there is something called as Amavata. Very uh, typical USPs of um, Ayurveda, these are, where um, you can't explain that under a MRI. Uh, something like Ama, Ama is a, uh, so it's a, a vata, ama vata. It's a problem of the wind only, air only. Air is not seen, we see. That under no scanner, we can see air. We can only feel uh, from the work that it does and the, from the quality. So from a karma and a guna aspect only, we can uh, 
identify that. So this particular concept, ama, ama is in a simple term means uh, that which is not digested. So uh, let us uh, imagine a fire uh, lit by, uh, let's say, fire wood. You can't light directly a log. You start with a smaller branch, then the fire catches better, then you put a little bigger branch. So from a twig to a branch to a log, you gradually migrate um, to get a bigger fire. On a smaller fire, if you put a log, what happens? Fire definitely extinguishes and the log also remains over there. So this particular thing we will imagine in our tummy, our digestive capacity probably is less, the digestive fire is less. And just because we like food, we have eaten. So if we have eaten when the digestive capacity is less, what will happen? Same that effect. The little fire will also extinguish and that food that we have consumed will remain in the body as undigested material. So this undigested material is what Ayurveda labels as ama. Then what happens? The absorption of the nutrients is not there. Excretion is also not going to be good. And it lies down over there, creating a problem. Do uh, Having done once, is it a problem? No. When you repeatedly do that, then this ama traverses and lodges in the weaker part, weaker part of your body. So if it is going and lodging in the joint, there it causes this ama vata. So one of the symptoms is you don't feel uh, hungry, you feel heavy, you feel malaise, uh, and you feel uh, feverish. Yes, you can go ahead with the next slide. So now, uh, what does Ayurveda approach? So when we know the problem is a vata, or a problem is a pitta, or this problem is a ama, it's easier for us to take decisions on that. And in Ayurveda, we have this fourfold of uh, treatment. Uh, something to be given internally, let's say it's just because of uh, ama, then you give some medicines which would digest the ama. Problem would be the knee. Medicine is given to the stomach. See the connection. Problem is with the knee. Medicine is given for uh, vata. Problem is with the knee. You, you say you don't eat this. And then, of course, the exercise. Exercise will form as a crucial part in Ayurveda, of course, we say with the yoga aspect, but some exercise, we may not know the asana name, but uh, we do a particular mo a movement. And that is, again, uh, very favorable to maintain a good joint health. Let's pick up now one, one each. So let's go to the next slide. So Ayurveda formulations, there are various formulations. Sometimes the first one, which you see, the jar, they are fermented. Uh, liquids that are placed. Um, some herbs are dried and just powdered. They are called churna. The first with the drums is they are called asava or arishtas. Uh, you must have heard raksha arishta, the samula arishta, or pipala uh, asava. So it depends upon how the formulation is done. But the main thing is they are going to be placed in the barrel and the ferment, natural fermentation by adding certain flowers uh, which aid a fermentation. Then there are different oils. Uh, its oils are not just external, but it's also given for like, internal use also. Then there are certain uh, herbs that uh, mix together and we make tablet out of. Uh, they are called gulikas or vatikas. Hmm. Then there are uh, some, we can say, um, paste format. Then there is something in the kashaya, the decoction format. Um, they are, these are called rasayanas, uh, which are in the paste format. Decoctions are called as kashayas. So there are various ways um, the Ayurveda medicine is uh, prepared, depending upon what is intended out of it, who has to take it. Um, what is, like if you say kashayam, um, you need to have a good mental uh, strength or preparedness to take a kashayam. These are little bitter liquids. But um, they work fantastic. Arishtan, um, uh, they have, because they are undergone a fermentation uh, process, um, they get absorbed in the bloodstream faster. So to give um, kids also, it's easy because it has a little sweetened taste. 
Uh, let's go ahead. Externally, what we can do. So externally, there are two ways. We just apply some oil or we give some heat back and we stabilize the vata over there. Uh, uh, internally also when we give medicine, it can be called as that first kind, the chamana, where you don't remove anything out of the body. You pacify the aggravated wind or the pitta or within the body. So that is called shamana, where locally you do something and you pacify the aggravated uh, vata or pitta. And the shodhana aspect means you remove it out from the body. So uh, sometimes probably the anal root is just a common in a vata uh, kind of a treatment called as enema is used. Hmm? Uh, sometimes you will be using bloodletting, which we'll talk about it. And otherwise, uh, the main treatment is externally when we talk is going to be the oiling and some heat. Many times, like let's say, a rheumatoid arthritis case where there is a, a fever or this where you know there is a nice redness and the swelling go together. So sometimes oil is contraindicated. So not in all knee joint pain we apply oil. So we have to assess that. If it's a pure vata case, definitely oil will help. But let's say there is something ama happening over there. And before we digest that undigested material, applying oil over there is going to be a problem. Uh, let's go. So uh, I've shown these various, uh, we'll go back to the previous slide. I've shown these various kinds of um, boluses that are tied, right? So sometimes you put a dry powder into that bolus, depending upon what is the condition. If there is an ama or something, you just give a dry heat. Sometimes you need nourishment for the joint. So then um, we, have, uh, we have got a special rice that's cooked in the milk and that heat is given. And sometimes uh, fresh herbs are also used. Let's go ahead. So what are the other ways? Um, we just said about oiling and uh, heat. But it can be just like simple oil application, abhyanga we call that. Sometimes we apply some paste. Um, it's called a lepa. You just crush some herbs and you apply that paste on the knee. Sometimes along with the paste, we tie a bandage kind of over it and try to heat it, heat the local air. So that's called as a upanaha. Then these different types of kiris I've said, no, that whether we put a dry powder to tie that bolus to get the heat or the rice or the leaves. So there are different kinds depending upon what is that individual condition. You can't say, okay, osteoarthritis, this is the kiri. It doesn't work that way. We have to tailor make for that particular person. We have to assess his vata pitta. So it's very, very fine. You, you can't just assess over a, a, a x-ray or this. This is this case, so this is, we cannot. Individually, that proportion we will have to, we'll have to uh, come down very specific you know, to see whether it's a vata, it's a dryness, um, or it's a pitta. Uh, there is already heat is over there. There's Or there is a lot of swelling, or there is a combination. So one, one size fits all will not work in Ayurveda. It has to get tailor-made and that's why there are so many different kinds of ways that a person um, can be treated in, again, tailor-made for that particular person. So we'll not be classifying uh, this disease is this medicine and this treatment. Then there is something called Ekanga Dhara or Sarvanga Dhara. Ekanga means you uh, on one particular part. That means knee is failing, you're putting only on the knee. But let's say a Vaidya, the Ayurveda doctor has seen uh, that the problem is in the knee, expressed in the knee. But the entire body's vata is going crazy. So you can put actually oil on the whole body. So it depends upon that person. Uh, we have to decide whether we just treat knee as local treatment or we have to do the full body treatment. Then Ratta Moksha is bloodletting out, which is my forte using the leech therapy. And Pattabandhana is um, different kinds of bandages are used. Again, a forte of Ayurveda. Let's go ahead. 
so this is an example of how the upanaha uh, is put on the knee. Let's go ahead. Hmm. One of the leech therapies. Uh, and I've seen uh, applying leeches um, instantly relieving the pain. Uh, again, depending upon whether uh, if, if it is a pure vata, then you don't need a, a leech. When the rakta component is involved into it, pitta component is involved and you use the leech, uh, we get a very good uh, result uh, applying leech uh, for knee pain with redness, swelling. Go ahead. Uh, there would be different solutions, different yoga poses, uh, knee-specified treatments like we see over here in the picture called as Januvasti. Let's go ahead. Yeah, what to eat, what not to eat. Uh, yogurt, everybody says, is a very good thing. But in a knee pain case, yogurt is a really banned substance. Hmm? Better not have yogurt. And uh, you should learn how to make buttermilk. We should know how to treat buttermilk with turmeric, asafoetida, ginger, curry leaves and uh, have buttermilk. Uh, it's better uh, to do the amapachan. Amapachan, digestion of all those toxins. Undigested material is what you understand as toxins and we call it as ama. So the big no for yogurt. Then all those nightshade vegetables, huh? brinjal, tomato, peppers, uh, potato, <laughs> big, big, no. All your favorite uh, smoothies, hmm? uh, ice creams, um, yogurt drink, uh, milk and fruit together. Everything is called as viruddhana in Ayurveda. So it's a big no in specifically uh, a knee pain case. All your cold drinks, uh, um, juices that are being actually bottled the juices, um, all these, your favorite drinks, all everything is out from the picture. What you can include, which you have never liked, which you have never thought you can make the vegetable, those have to be included in the picture. We see some ridge god is there, snake god is there, bottle god is there, ash god is there. There are some millets. Mm -hmm. Uh, fruits like pomegranate, which we don't like to buy because there is a lot of work to de seal them and eat. So all that we don't like is very good over here. What we like is out in the avoid section, unfortunately. Let's go ahead. So another part comes is why we have to exercise because it will help uh, gain the strength of that muscle it will make that joint stable and stronger. Um, and when you get that strength, um, you are actually automatically avoiding the pain or any problem to come over there. It relieves the uh, stiffness. Let's go ahead. So some isometric moves and wall slides, you can see. Like, you, know, you just lean against the wall and then Put the stretch out that feet forward and then slowly slide without losing the touch from the wall um, to the sitting position. So you are not actually using the uh, knee active muscle, but using all the pressure on the back. So when you do the movement, but you don't use the movement on the, uh, what involves on the knee, the muscles, then uh, such moves are better. Um, what I've not mentioned over here, I just remember suddenly when I said this, like how to climb the stairs and how to get down. Um, it's like we try to keep the feet straight, just keep it outward and line the knee also in that outward direction. And instead of using the thigh muscle, because you are using the cord that is supporting the knee, uh, tighten the glute and uh, do it with the glute. So when you have to climb the stairs and when you have to get out. So that's one of the ways where you can uh, damage less your knee. Let's go for the next slide. Um, some of the exercises like you can uh, do some calf stretching, hmm? quad stretch, hand stretch you can do. Or this uh, seated hip march. Just sit erect and then march <clears throat> so that you're in a it's a very good exercise to build the knee muscle strength. Let's go ahead. 
Yes, we've come to the end. Uh, I've tried to uh, finish as fast as possible. We started a little late. So I've taken five minutes extra to uh, finish, maybe a little more than five minutes, so seven, eight minutes extra to finish this so that everything else I can take it into the question and answer session. So I'll take a few questions if you have. And those who are in Singapore, um, yes, uh, I'm available now to, for consultation. So do please contact. Ayurveda has got some lovely remedies because not all problem is seen as a gross level. Okay, this is not fitting well, remove it. <laughs> we'll put something else. Everything should not. Oh, this is not having this. Okay, you inject something. We need those extreme uh, solutions are needed for the extreme, extreme cases. But to not go into that stage, uh, we have got some brilliant uh, solutions, doable things. Um, and uh, one uh, before we uh, uh, go for the question and answer, the doable thing at home is uh, known if you don't have the medicated oils, uh, so much resources, we are not in Singapore and able to see me uh, because I see so many people from other country also. Uh, you use a simple sesame oil, that's enough. Sesame oil is easily available. Uh, camphor is easily available. Just warm up the sesame oil, drop in one camphor into it and oil your body regularly. You will not get into it. If you have gone into the situation also, the same answer I would say. Always see that the digestion is perfect. You have, you don't eat food because you like the food so that the ama doesn't form and we don't land up in such a knee pain and ama is never diagnosed and whatever you do is magnifying the pain. Okay, so I'll just see if any questions. Uh, it's open for question and answers. If you have, please type in. So, any hands to be raised for any question and answers, please. Or you can type a question. It's, it, and we'll be very happy if no question means you've understood it very clearly. <laughs> I saw you together. I, if you've not understood, also you will not have any questions. Oh, thank you, thank you, Gabriela. Yes, it would be. It would be amazing. Um, eventually, I think Nafil should be venturing into. Uh, traveling to Europe to uh, give talks, see few patients, if that happens, works. Yes, we should be able to do that, Gabriella. Thank you for that suggestion. Any more questions? Excellent. So at least, um, to, uh, since there are no questions coming in, uh, I'll say a few quick uh, things that one was this, use at least sesame oil. Um, just see um, if your knee feels extensively hot. If you feel that the knee is extensively hot, don't put oil. Then you do a home remedy. What you can do is the, the crystal salt, not the salt powder, and the, sto uh, the salt which you get in the stone form, the crystal salt. Just take a fistful of the fist, uh, that salt, cut lemon into four parts, and you tie that together, warm it up on whatever you have, some pan, and apply that heat. This could be another home remedy. When not to use oil. So uh, when you have fever, uh, when there is swelling with redness and warmth, uh, you don't have to use uh, oil. When you don't have an appetite, you feel aversion for the food, you don't have to use oil. Uh, so first we have to digest uh, the ama. And but the pain is there when we will digest yama and there. So in such conditions, the dry heat has to be given and not the oil heat uh, has to be given. And those who I see some people from India also who have joined in India, uh, some herbs grow at the roadside itself, like a castor plant, you will be uh, finding growing at the, near some garbage area, somewhere you'll find some castor plant uh, on the roadside, the, under, you might be standing under the shade of a tamarind tree. Uh, so uh, some of these plants, like the tamarind leaves, uh, the leaf of the castor, these are uh, excellent in uh, just absorbing all the pain. So 
uh, in that thing like how i said you tie the lemon and the the lemon and the salt you throw these leaves into it and you tie and then give the heat or the castor plant uh, leaf is like so wide you can tie a castor plant uh, leaf also by heating it on the leaf so uh, it's very it's uh, the techniques are very simple uh, very inexpensive uh, but unfortunately a uh, few people know it um, and um, expensive treatments are going on so many times i feel very uh, sad that this could have been in an inexpensive manner treated um, and that's why this topic it looks very fast and very dangerous but actually the solutions uh, are very simple when we come with ayurveda okay so i don't see any more questions coming um so i think we can end the session then uh with prayers to the almighty for everyone's peace i chant a small uh, prayer and i'll translate that as i chant om sarve bhavantu sukhinah may all be in peace sarve bhavam tu niramaya may all be disease free sarve bhadrani pashyantu may all see only auspiciousness everywhere ma kashchit dukha bhag bhave let nobody be unhappy or in pain om shanti 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 he let there be peace in the external world in the immediate people around me and within me thank you everyone for joining me tonight uh, next week also probably we will have uh, uh, another session i'm planning to have at least uh, till the new year one per week maybe we have three more sessions probably let's see and those who have my number or i had actually posted now you can get in touch with that and if you have any topics to suggest you want to hear from me something uh, please do uh, let me know i'll pick up the topic what you would like to hear some of them have uh, asked me for um, menopause and all also so i'll be adding those topics and those who want to regularly hear keep a big list for me <laughs> i'll prefer all those topics and we can probably have every week or every fortnight in which of ways when we do thank you thank you for joining thank you very much dr vasha thank you very much everyone have a good night